Hello and welcome back to FPV Tips. I'm George and today we're going to set up the DJI Digital FPV system. This video had been a long time coming, but it's finally here. Between being way too busy at work and waiting for the DJI Digital FPV system to arrive for more than two months, the good news is that it's finally here. And in this video, I'm going to take you on an adventure with me as I unbox and go through the complete setup of the DJI Digital FPV system with the Holy Bro Copus 2 quad. We're going from start to finish without skipping any steps, so you can feel comfortable that if you follow along, your system should work just fine in the end. If you want to jump to a specific part of the video, check out the timestamps in the description and skip to the parts you want to watch. If you don't care for the unboxing part, feel free to skip to 321. To kick off the setup process, we will start by plugging in the DJI remote controller to charge. It's important you do that first because it might take anywhere between 3 to 4 hours or more for the first charge. And you have to have that done before we update the firmware. So make sure you plug in the radio to charge as soon as possible. You can do that with the provided USB-C cable. Next, we're gonna go through a few simple but nevertheless necessary steps. Um, we're gonna install the head strap to the goggles. Screw in the four provided antennas.
Next, let's install the antennas in the air unit. Because I'm doing my setup for the Holybro Copies 2 quad. I have a cable for the air unit that came with the drone and I will use that since it's a completely solderless setup in that case. Next up, let's activate the system and do the software updates. One of the first things we need to do is we need to head on over to DJI site and uh, go to the download section to grab the DJI Assistant software. Proceed to install the software, accept the agreement, the default location is fine, sure, accept most of the defaults. And launch DJI Assistant 2. You might get this prompt to allow the application to get uh, past the Windows firewall. You need to accept the terms of use, privacy policy, data authorization. I think we need to enable both. Product improvement program. Um, I guess so, we can join that. Um, at this point, you should start connecting your devices in order to get them recognized. However, because uh, this is my first DJI product, I also will take a moment to um, actually create an account. So you could go to sign up and you could create a new account. Login account will be this verification code. You. 9G and sign in. I think we can start adding our products. Um, we can start, for example, with the goggles. We need a couple of things. We will need this XT60 to DC barrel jack cable. I already have a just a regular 4S battery in order to power the battery uh, the, uh, the goggles make sure you have installed your antennas in general that's important for video transmitters and not sure how important it is in GGI's case but it's always better to have the antennas installed just in case then you're gonna need also a um, this this USB-C to USB-A cable in order to connect the goggles to your computer. So first we're gonna power on the goggles by plugging them right here into the power jack. I don't think you can really pick this up here in the... So at this point we're gonna also connect the goggles via the USB-C port in here. 
and connect them to a computer. It's possible that this cable did not make good connection, so do make sure to press it in all the way uh, nicely. If everything works out fine, you should actually see um, the goggles being recognized, recognized in the connected devices in here. So, and the device pigeon is ready, it's set up and ready to go, it seems. Um, we're gonna click here FPV goggles. We're gonna start activation, activate with this account, confirm the account, click next, agree with more stuff and activate the product. Once activation is successful, we then need to update the software for the goggles. New firmware is available, updating strongly recommended. There is a host of new features. Um, one of the things that was released um, latest by DJI is this um, ability to view HDMI broadcast. We are definitely going to be updating the firmware on the product. Let's see how long this takes. Okay, so we finally see update complete. Pretty good. Interesting here. So the goggles are at this point updated uh, and ready to be bound a bit later. For now, we're just going to unplug them from the USB port and unplug them from power. With that, the goggles are ready. The next thing we're going to do is probably gonna be the air unit just because the radio in my case is still charging for the next bit in order to update the dji air unit um, firmware and to activate the product make sure you have your antennas in um, in my case i'm planning to use this drone um, in order to provide power to it because just connecting it via the usb-c port um, is not enough plug this in Validate that everything is fine. In order to provide power to this, we need to plug it in via this connector. And then we're gonna connect it to the computer with the USB-C. I'm actually wondering, I think it could be that we need to take the top plate off when we're actually doing this setup later. Power on the quad. Everything seems to be fine. The air unit is on, judging by the screen now LED. Um, finally, again, just connect the USB C cable here and onto the computer. We now see FP DJI FPV air unit. So jumping over to the computer, start activation of the device, um, confirm, accept the terms and conditions and start the activation. I think when the hair unit is connected to a computer, it shouldn't run very hot, it should run on the minimum power output. But regardless, I like always being um, very quick. Activation, success. Complete. Now we're just gonna check for new firmware and install that. Um, 
So confirm. There we go. Even the uh, software seems to warn us that avoid touching the air unit during updates as its temperature will increase. Uh, update in well ventilated environment. Prolonged standby will shut down the air unit due to overheating. If overheating occurs, wait for the air unit to cool down and try again. Yeah, for that reason, I would like to ideally be very quick when updating the firmware and in general when turning on the uh, air unit. And now that we've updated the firmware on the air unit and we've waited a little bit for the uh, unit to cool off, we can actually go ahead and um, set it up here within the drone. Um, just make sure that they're plugged in correctly and then it goes here to the back port. Nothing special about that. Next, we're going to be setting up the camera. You could probably notice that the camera has this triangle or arrow pointing upwards, so we need to position it in a way that it fits like so. The arrow pointing up. And then we're going to move the camera back until we see the mounting holes matching the holes on the 3D print, something like that. And you could adjust the angle. I'm gonna go for something like 30, 35 degrees tilt. Let's do it. Don't forget to peel off the double-sided sticky tape here from the top. I guess this is to help with um, keeping it placed, the air unit. Sandwiched between this top plate and, um, and actually the, the back tape you mount. But yeah, you wanna make sure that it's nice and snug against the back and then just apply that. top plate down. Once you are sure it's positioned in place correctly, you could try to push the air unit upwards against the double-sided sticky tape and make it st stick there.
and this is the end product. I'm more or less satisfied with the result for now. Um, we are going to the antenna seem to be nicely in place this time perfectly slotted in the TPU mount here. We you might have this gap between the top plate and the air unit, in which case you just wanna pull it upwards and try to press it against that top plate nicely so that it could catch on to the double-sided sticky tape. And uh, we're good. Really, the only thing left is to um, fix the, the transmitter, to bind, and to install a couple of SD camera, uh, SD cards. Definitely don't forget to put an SD card in the air unit and in your goggles. Um, finally, after charging the transmitter, we're gonna connect it to a computer. I need to turn, turn it on. Okay, and we finally see DJI FPV remote controller. Start activation, select the account, confirm the settings, agree. Let's download and install the latest firmware. Okay, and finally we're done with this update as well. So now all the devices are updated, you just need to link them and hopefully just go offline. Okay, finally time to do the binding or linking as DJI calls it in their case. And you must start with the goggles, especially if you're about to use the transmitter as well. To do that, we're gonna power on the goggles again using, a, well in this case I'm using some random 3S battery to provide power here. And then I'm gonna power on the goggles. Please do make sure that you have your antennas on, etc. Um, the power plug is right here, as is the bind button right there. I'm gonna power on the goggles. I'm gonna power on this quad. Plugging it in to this XT, like this. The air unit should go red to let us know that it's ready to bind. Press the button, yes, now it gets red. Now it's ready to bind. Move over here, here to the goggles and uh, try to find the bind button and press it. There we go, and this, the air unit turned green. Let's see what the goggles are showing. The goggles are showing picture, which is great. Slightly blurry, but that's gonna do for now. Now that we're done with this, I will power cycle the goggles by unplugging them from here. I'm also going to turn this off. I want to verify that my link is working. Um, be mindful of how much time you take to do these operations because you don't want to get this unit way too toasty. Um, I guess all the time. It's a whole other story when you're flying around and um, the air unit has the time to actually cool off. And probably nothing bad is going to happen to it, but avoid to, you know, to fuss around for like way too long without actually just doing the binding. Just get it done and move on. Um, what I'm gonna do now, however, is I'm gonna plug in one more time just to verify the setup. So I'm gonna power on my goggles again, plug in a battery here again. And I wanna make sure that picture immediately. I see the DJI logo and I see picture. For this next bit, um, 
again you need to bind the radio only after you have bound the goggles already so pay attention to that but for this next bit we're gonna be again quick i'm gonna power on the air unit and put it in bind mode and then i'm gonna press here the record this button and this dial at the same time i'm gonna press them all three in at the same time so first let's power on the radio anyway radio is powered on um, next, we're going to provide power to the quad. And once, once you have power, um, let's take a look at the other side actually. So, this is what we care for. Um, I'm going to press the link button here. Now that it's in linking mode, I'm gonna press this, this, this here, this here, and this at the same time in one, two, three. Press the min, green light here. I think we should be bound successfully. I'm gonna unplug, unplug the drone. Green light here which is now red to denote the link status. Um, just to test things real quick, I'm gonna plug the drone back in. Not doing anything else this time. And I would assume, not very familiar with DJI products, but I would assume that this should turn green if we have good link. Good, we should be ready to arm and to go fly. That we finally have link. Uh, let's try to test if we can arm the quad. It would be nice if you could actually go fly today. Again, connected to power. I think by default this should be the arm switch that they've connected in beta flight. Probably requires us. There we go. And we have armed. The motors are all rotating correctly. This quad is set up in props in mode, which is what I'm more familiar with, which is perfect. Um, let's test throttle. Your left, your right. One of the last things we're gonna do before we go out flying is I have a couple of uh, SD cards here. These are just some random Hopefully high speed enough, 32 gig um, cards. I'm gonna plug one each, each into uh, the uh, DJI Air unit and one into the goggles. I wanna get all the footage I can. Nope, that's not the right way. This is the right way. This way. Again, it should click in very nicely. Actually, yeah, and there we go. I'm gonna power the goggles on. I'm gonna take a look if um, if uh, the SD cards have to be formatted in some sort of a way. Format SD card. There is indeed goggles aircraft. I have an option for goggles. Format SD card. Confirm. SD card formatted. The Holy Pro uh, Copis 2 HDV comes with two sets of actually different props. Um, we have this TS1, uh, well, oh, sorry, T5147, uh, and we have the T5143S. Um, one of them is like slightly higher, more aggressive pitch, and the other one is like a more, um, like a smoother prop. I'm gonna go for the slightly smoother prop for now, for the first flight, which is the T5143S with uh, the lower pitch. Even though I think I'm going to prefer the other ones better. Let me just double check that I'm not lying by comparing. But I do think that yes, this is a slightly more aggressive prop. So you could take a look at the pitch angle on this one, which is much more linear, not at all 
aggressive versus this one it's a bit higher pitched so we're gonna go for the lower pitched drops one thing that is gonna be a bit suboptimal about this test is the fact that I didn't manage to get my new 6S batteries uh, on time they're still stuck somewhere in the post so I don't know when those are gonna come in finally but we're just gonna fly on 4S today um, I think in general we're gonna be just fine doing that um, we shouldn't obviously expect um, crazy performance from it but that's should be the only difference now as mentioned the props and as we noticed earlier the props are in props in mode which means these motors are rotating um, in this direction so if we put the cra craft here and we're going in this direction which means that a prop where the pitch is going from low to high needs to be put on this motor in order to be going in this way and bringing in the air in this direction um, that means that a similar prop should be placed here we have this type of a prop here that is going to be going this way and this type of prop here is going to be going this way uh, i'm just going to add the motor nuts next and um, and uh, yeah i'm really excited i'm really excited to finally go fly this thing yep so that's why you do hover tests i'd like to thank you folks for watching and promise that in part three we really finally go flying this quad i hope you found this video useful and entertaining and if you've made it this far consider liking the video if you did and subscribing to the channel to motivate me to make more videos either way enjoy fpv and happy flying in order to uh, um, do the connection just right. Drake is not sitting next to you. Oh, hi Drake, are you coming to sit next to me? Yeah. Welcome back, Drake. He's sitting on your chair, chair daddy. That's okay, Drake.